Welcome students to Chapter 6's first video lecture discussing the electronic structure of atoms. Before we get going, I'd like to share a clip from one of my favorite movies and one of the funniest movies of all time, Nacho Libre. Where is your rope, Ignacio? It was stinky, but these are my recreation clothes. They look expensive. Thank you. I mean, yes, they may have the appearance of riches, but beneath the clothes, we find a man. And beneath the man, we find his nucleus. I like this clip because it has to do with, you know, the structure of atoms. The importance of an atom's nucleus brings us to our fun fact for the day. Fusion reactions of helium-3, which is the isotope of helium that has one neutron instead of two, have the potential of creating large amounts of clean energy, which is something we need in this world. Unfortunately, helium-3 is very rare on Earth. There are only about 30 kilograms of it here. However, there are about one million tons of helium-3 on the moon. Gerald Kolsinski, a professor at the University of Wisconsin, is researching helium-3, which you can read more about at this link. That brings us to our cats of the day, brought to you by quickmeme.com. Teach us about absolute zero. Okay. And what did the bartender say when oxygen, hydrogen, sulfur, sodium, and phosphorus walked into his bar? Oh, snap! <laughs> uh, you know, when I was a kid, I had a cat that was angry all the time, and I noticed that whenever he was angry, he always put his ears back. I thought, you know, being a kid, that if I just moved his ears back forward, it would make him happy again. I tried it many times. It didn't work. After today's presentation, which will cover sections 1 through 5 from chapter 6 of our text, you should be able to describe frequency and wavelength and use equation 6.1 from your text. If given frequency or wavelength, use figure 6.4 to identify its radiation type. Explain quantization of energy and use equation 6.2. You keep your slimy tentacles off my planet. If you wanted to stop me, you should have done it when you possessed the quantonium. Now you're nothing. Use equation 6.8 and be familiar with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Be familiar with four types of orbitals, S, P, D, and F, and note that we'll skip section 6.3. In this video, we'll discuss bullet points 1 and 2 from this list, starting with electromagnetic radiation and the electromagnetic, or EM, spectrum. Electromagnetic radiation is a fancy term for light, or radiant energy. There are seven different kinds of electromagnetic, or EM, radiation. Visible light, which is the only form of EM radiation we can see, is just one of them. Here is a list of the rest. Now, as you look at this figure, you should see that we've got wavelength across the top and frequency across the bottom. You'll notice that they're inversely related. Wavelength gets larger as you go to the right, while frequency gets larger as you go to the left. You'll also notice that visible light, all of the colors that we can see, only occupy a narrow band in the EM spectrum world. Also, within this narrow band, we see violet having the smallest wavelength and red having the longest wavelength. I'll explain this inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency momentarily. So, EM radiation behaves kind of like a wave. What in the world does that mean? Well, if you look at a water wave, you can see that it has a repeating pattern, as I've shown in this cute little figure. The distance between each of the crests from one wave to the next is called its wavelength. The number of waves that pass through a given point is called its frequency. The longer the wavelength, the shorter the frequency, and vice versa. Once again, I'll explain that a little bit momentarily. So, like a water wave, EM radiations emanate from their sources in a wave-like fashion like this. As I've already stated, we can see that EM radiation, or EM energy, also has a wavelength, abbreviated uh, mathematically using this term lambda, and frequency, abbreviated using this fancy italicized letter V. It's actually a Greek letter called nu. <laughs> if you could imagine radio waves, if you had the ability to see them at least, they have a very long wavelength, which means that as you looked at them, they might look like a little wave like this. And the distance from one crest of one wave to the next crest would be pretty long. Now, if you were to hold out your hand and watch radio waves pass by your hand, you could count how many waves are going past my hand in a given time period. Because the waves for radio waves are very large, the number of times one of them passes by your hand in a given time period is going to be very small. This number, the number of times that a wave passes a given point, such as your hand, in a given time period, 
is called that wave's frequency. We see then that wavelength and frequency are inversely related. That is, longer the size of a wavelength or the longer its length, the bigger the wave, such as radio waves, the fewer of those waves are going to pass through a point in a given period of time. And that's what frequency is, is how many of those pass a point in a given period of time. So the larger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency, and vice versa. And now to blow your minds. See, it turns out all types of EM radiation travel at the same speed, which is the speed of light that happens to be 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which is kind of fast. Because of that, we can relate wavelength and frequency using this equation from our text. That takes us to a set of problems. I'm going to invite you to pause and read these problems to yourself, and if you want, attempt to do them. I'm going to show you momentarily how to do them by filming myself doing it on the board. That concludes this lecture. Please stay tuned for the next one, in which I will teach you about particles, waves, and human urine. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.